Welcome back to the channel, and for today's video, I'm going to give a quick breakdown of the Sacramento poker scene. There's three main spots in Sacramento. Capitol Casino, Thunder Valley, and the infamous Stones Gambling Hall. Everyone talks about how crazy SoCal poker is, but I honestly think Sacramento poker can easily give it a run for its money. Let's start with Thunder Valley. If you want to play in a big tournament, this is the place to be. All of the major tournament series have ran through this joint throughout the years. WSOP, WPT, Run Good, you name it, they've got it. As far as their cash games go, they're a little slow during the week, but if you're in town for a weekend, this is a great place to be. Next up, we have Stone's Gambling Hall. They don't offer tournaments anymore, but as far as cash games go, they're legit. They have one of the few 1-2 games in the entire country that is worth playing. With their newly raised $300 cap, it's an action-packed game that's comparable to many 1-3 games in other areas. If you're wanting to have a fun time while not risking the entire bankroll and crushing some good food, their 1-2 game is the place to be. And then we save the best for last, which is none other than the granddaddy of them all, Capital Casino. You will always remember the day you played in the granddaddy of them all. It is by far the most action-packed poker room I've ever played in. If you're not prepared to constantly get bluffed or ride the variance train each time you step in the door, then you should think twice before entering. It features a 1-3 match to stack game, and seeing multiple $2,000 stacks on the table at once is just another day. It's the place that I'm proud to call my poker home for the time being. I honestly love all three rooms, and my dream one day is to hopefully get permission to film at all three locations. Unfortunately, a guy can only wish, so let me know in the comments which place is your guys' favorite, but for now, we only have permission to film at Capital Casino, so let's get to what you guys are here for. We buy in for our usual $500 stack to get things started, but after folding some pretty shitty hands for the first few orbits, we finally get something playable when I look down at Ace-4 Diamonds in the big blind. There's an under-the-gun limp, and next to act raises to $15. The small blind puts in the call, and now the action is on me. There's definitely some merit to using this hand as a 3-bet squeeze with some dead money out there, but since it's pretty early on in the session, I don't mind taking this hand multi-way, so I put in the $15 and so does the under-the-gun limper. We're going 4 ways to a flop with $60 in the middle, and the dealer throws out a jack-6-3 2-diamond board giving us the nut flush draw. The small blind decides to take matters into his own hands and donks for $20. This is a pretty strong line, so I decide to just put in the call, and so does the original razor. With $120 in the pot, the turn comes out the four of hearts, giving us a pair to go along with our flush draw. The board is starting to get a little more connected, and the small blind continues the aggression, but now only bets $45 into a pot of $120. I think very strong hands would want to bet larger for more protection in a multi-way pot out of position, so to me, this feels like a mid-strength Jack X holding. I hate being monkey in the middle stuck between two opponents, so I'm looking to drive out the other player's equity while putting Jack X to the test. So I bump up the price of poker to $110, leaving myself exactly $300 behind. The original razor takes a second before tossing his hand in the muck, so we've executed step one of our master plan. Now the action is back on the small blind. I have a pretty tight image at Capital Casino, so I'm hoping to use that to my advantage with this play since turn raises are super under bluffed. If I get called, I obviously plan to value bet any diamond, ace, or four, but if any other card than a jack comes out, my plan is to put our opponent to the test and jam all in. But fortunately, this hand doesn't come to that because after a mini tank from our opponent, he tosses his hand in the muck and we take down a solid pot with just a pair of fours. A short stack limps under the gun, and I look down at my favorite hand in poker, Jack-10 suited, and raise it to $15. The big blind and limber both put in the call, so we're going three ways to a flop in position. 
The flop comes out jack-8-7 with two diamonds and one heart, giving us top pair with a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. The big blind now donks for $20, the under-the-gun short stack jams for $26 total, and now it's back on me. I'm actually pretty happy with this action, because if the big blind does have a super strong hand, I can put in the call here, and all he can do is stick in the call as well, since the $26 wasn't enough for him to put in a raise. So I do just that, and the big blind sticks in the $6. So now we're going heads up to a dry side pot, and the turn comes out the two of hearts, giving us a backdoor flush draw to go along with our top pair. The big blind continues the aggression, but for the exact same sizing of $20. I was worried at first that he had a better jack or two pair, but this bet sizing is screaming a weaker one pair hand. Maybe something like ace eight? With that being said, I don't think a hand like ace eight can call a big raise, so I pretty much min click it to $45 looking to get value now and see if I can improve on the river, but our opponent ends up tossing his hand in the muck. I turn over my hand to show the other opponent what he's up against, and he shows queen jack offsuit for a better jack. With one card to come, we see the beautiful ten of diamonds giving us two pair and sucking out on our opponent. Then I do that. Then I do that. <laughs> That's all I know you're here. Eddie, you still want to play one While we're still stacking our chips from the previous hand, there's an early position limp, and I raise king jack offsuit to $15. The cutoff puts in the call, and so does the limper, so we're going three ways to a jack 8 6 2 heart board, and the early position limper starts off with the check. With top pair and a very good kicker, I need to get my value early because there's a million draws out there, so I decide on a sizing of $27. Only the cutoff puts in the call, and she's a pretty solid player, and being out of position with not many great cards left in the deck that are great for our holding, I have to be careful. So we go heads up to a turn, and it comes out the worst card in the deck in the Queen of Hearts. That gives any heart combination a flush, Queen Jack, which I was beating, to pair, and now 10-9 gets there for the straight. So I obviously start off with the check, but luckily she checks it back. The river brings out the king of diamonds giving us two pair and since he checked back on the turn I don't think she has much so I decide to down bet to $35 targeting a hand like jack 10 that she folds pocket 10's face up and we take down a nice little pot to keep the heater going. Little heat check time perhaps over Kyrie. Butter. In this next hand, there's an under the gun limp and a super station makes it just $6 in early position. It gets folded to me and I look down at 6-5 of diamonds on the button and raise it up to $24 looking to isolate this player in position. We get exactly that when this guy just puts in the call. We're going heads up to a flop with $50 in the middle and the flop comes out a 7 6 with two diamonds giving us the world with a pair and a flush draw. Out of nowhere, this player now donk leads for an overbet of $65. I'm hating this because I've played with this guy many times before, and this hand is simply a monster ace, two pair, or a set. Nothing else. I honestly want to fold this hand right now because I have zero fold equity if I put in a raise, but I honestly won't be able to look at myself in the morning if I don't at least see a turn in position. So I put in the crying call and the turn comes out a complete blank in the two of clubs. He continues the aggression by betting an even $100 out of his rack. I'm hating this spot even more because the price is pretty close to be getting the right odds, but I hate making slightly profitable or unprofitable calls against calling stations. Against these types of players, our big edge comes from having the aggression ourselves and putting them in the tough spot, not the other way around. So I reluctantly toss my hand in the muck, and the heat check has a worse ending than my man Terry on the 4th of July. Reverse, Terry! What did it reverse? Oh, Lord! Lord, Jesus! Oh, Lord! In this next hand, we're looking to get things back on track. We see four limps to me in the big blind, and I look down at a semi-premium hand in ace-queen offsuit. Since I'm out of position, I'm looking to only take this pot two to three ways, so I bump up the price of poker to $23, but one by one, every single limper puts in the call. 
So just like 99% of pots at Capital Casino, we're going five ways to a flop. We get a pretty favorable flop when the dealer puts out an ace nine eight rainbow and we have ourselves top pair with a legit kicker. I don't see a point in slow playing this, but I think betting big would be a huge mistake because we don't want weaker pairs to fold right away. So I throw in a $35 bet and an early position limper puts in the call. One of the middle position limpers now jams his short stack of $28 and everyone else gets out of the way. With $14 in the side pot, we're going heads up to the turn, which comes out the jack of clubs. I don't really know how I feel about this card because the board is starting to get more connected and a hand I was beating like ace jack now makes two pair. But I still think there's merit to betting to target all the combinations of jack 10 out there, which now has a pair and a straight draw. So I decide to continue the aggression and bet 65 I don't really know how I feel about this sizing because it doesn't really accomplish much and I could leave myself susceptible to getting check raised putting me in a very nasty spot. But luckily, our opponent decides to just call and I honestly don't know if I'm ahead or behind. So we go to a river with a couple decent sized pots to battle for and it comes out a very interesting card in the queen of clubs giving us top two pair but giving any ten a straight. Even though I have top two pair, I don't feel too comfortable value betting it out of position since the main hand I put him on was jack ten. So I reluctantly check and think the sweet lord himself our opponent checks back. I turn over my hand, and it's good against his jack-9. We were ahead on the flop, behind on the turn, and luckily sucked out and hit an 8-outer on the river, giving us the best hand and taking down a very solid pot. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money! We got another interesting hand when there's one limp in early position and I decide to overlimp the duck pocket deuces. Three more people put in the $3 so we're going five ways to a flop with only $10 in the middle after the drop and the flop comes out queen jack deuce giving us bottom set. I can honestly say with 100% certainty that we have the best hand right now because I don't think pocket jacks or pocket queens would ever play in this way. So with that being said, when the action gets checked to me, I decide to overbet the pot and bet $19. I figure either someone has something or they don't, so there's zero point in slow playing this bad boy with all the possible draws and pairs to get action from. The small blind and one of the middle position limpers put in the call, so we're going three ways to a turn with $68 in the middle, and the dealer puts out the worst card in the deck in the 10 of hearts. Every flush gets there, every straight gets there, and now I'm left with the decision after both players check to me again. I think there's definitely merit to charge two pairs and high hearts, but I chicken out and decide to check it back. So we're still going three ways to a river, which comes out the jack of spades, giving us a full house. The small blind now leads for $50, which is a pretty sizable bet given the pot size, and then the middle position player puts in the call. I'm over $600 effective with the small blind and $400 with the middle position player, so now I have to decide what the best play is. If I can't get a worse hand to call a raise, then I'm supposed to just call here as nitty as that sounds. But, after thinking for a little, I think it's possible a hand like King Jack might find a hero call given that I checked back the turn. So I go for it and raise the price of poker to $195. The small blind snap folds, so he must have been trying to steal it given my passive action on the turn, but now the middle position player goes in the tank. He starts rambling for over 30 seconds how I must have a full house, and eventually ends up tossing his hand in the muck. Looking back, I think my sizing was way too big given the action. I think the best course of action is to basically min click to a size of $125 to not only get called lighter, but to leave myself enough money behind in case I get shoved on and I'm not pot committed. But enough of the blabbering because I'm just glad to take down a nice little pot. The action in the game has really picked up and a couple players are playing 90% of their hands, so when there's two limps to me and I look down at ace-king offsuit in the cutoff, I bump up the action to $20. The button, small blind, and both limpers call, so just like every pot in Capital Casino, we are once again going five ways to a flop. 
The dealer puts out a Queen Jack 3 rainbow board, giving us two overs and a gutter to the nuts. The action gets checked to me, and if there was only two or three people in the pot, I would definitely throw out a half pot C bet, but there's no way I'm attempting to bluff these guys that call down three streets with second pair, so I decide to check, and so does the button. So we're still going five ways to a turn, which comes out the beautiful ten of clubs giving us the nuts. The small blind now starts the action with a $35 bet, and the middle position player puts in the call. The action gets folded to me, and I gotta think of the best course of action. Both of these players only have about $280 behind, so stack sizes are a little weird. I think a jam is way too big and could allow our opponents to overfold some good hands, so I just go with a small raise to $110 to try and leave a half pot bet if one of them calls. The small blind folds her hand right away, but the middle position player asks for a count and eventually puts in calling chips. The pot has ballooned to $355 pretty quick, and our opponent has about $170 left. So we're going heads up to a river, which comes out the beautiful eight of diamonds, guaranteeing that we still have the best hand. Our opponent checks for a third time, and I think there's only one move given the stack sizes, which is none other than an all-in. Unfortunately, our opponent doesn't think too long before mucking his hand, and we take down a nice pot to keep things going in the right direction. Next hand, we see one limp in early position, and I look down at the bullets, pocket aces in the hijack, and raise them up to $16. The cutoff button and limper all put in the call so four people are going to the flop and it comes out king jack nine with two diamonds we have ourselves an over pair and now the early position just open jams his entire stack and now the action is on me i ask the dealer for a count and she counts out a hundred dollars even i'm not loving it because when i look back at the hand i have the ace of diamonds blocking a lot of his flush draws and there's still two people behind me left to act but, I mean, it is pocket aces, the best hand ever created. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror the next morning if I folded, so I stick in the call, and I'm happy to see that the other two players fold. I turn over my hand like I always do when I'm all in, and our opponent shows jack seven of diamonds for middle pair and a flush draw. We're a slight favorite to win the hand, but we need to fade so many cards because any jack, seven, or diamond gives him the winner. The dealer burns and turns and puts out the five of clubs, which we love to see, and the river comes out a red five, but thankfully it's in the heart variety, giving us the winner, and the heater continues. Decide not to use it, Curry! Way down to Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Unfortunately, the heater came to an end after I lost a couple little small pots with pocket jacks and pocket fours, and the clock struck two, which is when I always leave, so let's get to the outro. Honestly, that was one of the smoother sessions I've had in a while. It's pretty easy when you make big hands and you don't have to pull off any bluffs. So as for results, we were into the game for our original $500 and out for $1,191 for a $691 profit. I decided to not play any online poker for the time being and just focus on my live poker and creating content. So as for live results, I played a quick session on Friday, March 1st, where I profited $104 and only played one session this week because I'm in the process of selling and moving out of my house. So in total, I played 6 hours and 50 minutes of live poker, resulting in a nice profit of $795. As always, I hope you rung it at the tables, and I'd appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button to help me reach my year-end goal of 2,500 subscribers.